So there's a reason that Corpse Husband has 6.9 million subscribers, that and he has a really deep and scary voice. Nice. Oh, are you? Okay, never say that to me again, first of all. All right, what's up guys? My name is Jacques or JQ, and today we're gonna to be editing Just Like Corpse Husband. The effects we're gonna be covering today are gonna to be super simple, super sweet, but they add that nice touch. Now, the effects we're gonna be covering today are gonna to be this death effect. After that, it's going to be a zoom and like a subtle motion going on after that zoom happens. And then lastly, is going to be this TV static that he likes to use whenever he's speeding up time. And like I said, these effects are super simple. So we're gonna go ahead and start with that first one, the death effect. Now, first thing you want to do to get this effect to happen, we're going to go ahead and go to the project files down on the bottom left hand corner of your screen. You're going to right click and then go to new item. We're going to go ahead and add in a color mat here, change it to 60 frames per second so we're not messing with anything slow. Also, this is going to be a red mat, so click anywhere on the color gradient and drag it into the bottom right hand corner of the color gradient. Hit OK, and then after that, we're going to go ahead and name this red mat just so we know which one we're messing with. Next up, go back down to the project files, right click, and we're going to add a new item, and that item is going to be an adjustment layer. Change the time base back to 60 frames per second again. Now once you've got both of these, go ahead and drag both of them onto your timeline. Go ahead and put the red mat above the adjustment layer and you'll see why in a minute. Now this effect is going to be super short. I mean like super short. So make sure that you're gonna size down the adjustment layer and the red mat. Now once you've gone ahead and sized down the mat and the adjustment layer, go ahead and click on the top layer, that red mat that we made. Go to the effects controls on the top left and then you're gonna hit the stopwatch next to opacity. Now go ahead and change that first keyframe value to 80%, then move your play it all the way to the end of your color mat and then change that opacity to zero. Now you can leave the red like this, but what I like to do is go to blend mode and then change it to overlay. I feel like it gives it a lot better of a red effect without it being so simple. And once you've done that, that's all you have to do for the red mat. So we can go ahead and move on to the adjustment layer. So go to the effects in the top right hand corner of your screen and look for an effect called transform. You're going to find it under distort and then drag that on top of that adjustment layer. Now go to the effects controls in the top left hand corner of your screen and scroll down a bit. So for this effect, we're going to be messing with scale and rotation. So hit the stopwatch next to both of those. Now your first scale value is going to be 105, and then your rotation value is going to be 2. Once you've done this, move your play to the very end, and then hit the reset keyframe button for both scale and rotation. All right, and there you go. Like I said, it's a super simple effect, but I encourage you to make this effect your own. So go ahead and change a couple things to make it special to you. And some ways for you to do that is to go back to that red mat that we we're messing with earlier and go down to blend mode. Now under blend mode, we chose overlay for this tutorial, but there's a lot of other ones that I think you can use that are pretty decent too. Some of my favorite being darken, multi multiply and soft light. They give that nice red overlay without being too overbearing. Next up is going to be the zoom with some subtle motion going on. And just like the last one, it's easy. There may be a couple of keyframes you have to put in, but it's not that big of a hassle. Now for this effect, we're gonna be using that adjustment layer again. So just grab it out of the project files in the bottom left and drag it onto your timeline. After that, grab another transform from the effects in the top right and drag it onto that adjustment layer. Now this is gonna be up to you, but you need to drag out this adjustment layer as long as you're gonna need it for your specific video. In my case, I'm just going to make it as long as this clip, but like I said, whatever you need for your specific video. After this, go ahead and select that adjustment layer and go to the effects controls in the top left. Scroll down a little bit so we have transform on our screen here. So first up, go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to scale. Then move your playhead to roughly around this area here and change your scale to 200. Next, you move your playhead forward just a hair bit and then hit another 200 keyframe. We're going to need that here in a second, but go ahead and select these left two keyframes that we just made. Right click and then go to Bezier. Next, grab this right keyframe that we just made that is not Bezier and make sure you can get it as close as you can to that 200 Bezier keyframe. Next, move this player to the end of your adjustment layer here, roughly around this area, and then hit the add keyframe button, move forward a little bit, and then change your scale value to 220. Lastly, move your player to the right some more and then change your scale value to 100. Next, grab your playhead and move it to the left of these three keyframes here and add one more 200 keyframe. Next, select these right three keyframes here, right click and then go to Bezier. After this, grab this 200 keyframe that's not Bezier and make it as close as you can to this other Bezier keyframe. Now we're almost done with scale, but we have to go ahead, hit this arrow next to scale, and we're gonna have to mess with the velocity of the scale. Don't worry, this is not difficult. It's just, you know, you gotta do a little bit. Now we're zoomed in on those left three keyframes that we made at the beginning. You're gonna select one of these keyframes and then grab the circle and move it as far left as you can. After you've done this, go ahead and do the same thing on the left side, grab the circle and move it as far right as you can and try to line up these circles. It should be fine just about where it is. Now what you'll end up having is this peak here, but I noticed my zoom was a bit slow for my liking. So just grab these two keyframes on the right and then just move them closer. Adjust it to how fast you want your zoom to be and then there you go. Next, go ahead and go to these right three keyframes here and we're gonna do 
the exact same thing except one small detail. Whenever you're making this curve, try to make it to where the peak is more towards that far right keyframe. Now you don't have to do this, but that's the way Corpse does it in his videos, so I figured I should do the same for you guys. And once again, if you don't like how fast the zoom is moving for you, just adjust the space between these keyframes and you're gonna get what you need. In my case, I had to move these keyframes significantly closer together. We're gonna be messing with position now, so go ahead and minimize the velocity graph next to scale. Grab your playhead and move it to roughly between these two keyframes here. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere in that general area. Then go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to position. Next up, to make this easier on you guys, we're gonna be adding three keyframes in, and here are the values for those three keyframes and the order in which you put them. This part of the effect is that subtle motion that's going on after the zoom's taking place, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is get these keyframes, like I said, with those values, and space them roughly about the same space like I have on my screen here. Now, once you've added those three keyframes in, go ahead and select the right three keyframes you made. Just hold the Alt key on your keyboard, left click, and then space them roughly about the same space. And we're just gonna make duplicates for as long as your effect needs to be. Now, once you've made duplicates of all those keyframes, the last step's pretty simple. Just select all of the keyframes you just made, right click, go to Templar Interpolation and Bezier. And that'll just give it a nice smooth motion while all this is going on. And like I said, that effect was not that bad. We just had to put some keyframes in, make a couple copies, Copies, but it wasn't that bad to do. Now you don't have to do this next step, but if you want to spice it up just a little bit more, hit this checkbox next to use composition shutter angle and then change your shutter angle value to 360. What that'll do is while that zoom in and zoom out effect is happening is give you a nice motion blur. It's softer on the eyes. It's nicer to look at. People like your video more and then you're, you know, nice and nice and nice and purdy. And our next and final effect is going to be this TV static effect. Now, it's definitely the most complicated out of all of these, but it's really just a lot of random values got to plug in. Don't worry, I'm going to give them to you. It's going to be nice and simple, and then you're going to have some good TV static in... Yeah, you're going to have some nice TV static. <laughs> Now for this effect, we're gonna to need to make another color mat. So go ahead and go to the project files in the bottom left, right click, new item, and color mat. Once again, make it 60 frames per second, hit okay, and we're gonna make this one white, so drag it into the bottom left-hand corner of this color gradient. Also, make sure to name it white mat. That way we know which mat we're messing with, then go ahead and drag it onto your timeline. After that, go ahead and grab another adjustment layer and drag it under that. Once again, you're gonna to need to drag these effects out as long as your effect is. So for my example, I'm just doing it as long as the clip is. Next, you're gonna to go to the effects in the top right, and you're gonna look for an effect called Roughen Edges. You're gonna find it under Stylize, drag that onto the white mat. After this, look for an effect called Wave Warp, and then you're gonna find it under Distort. Once again, it's gonna go onto that white mat. And then lastly, you're gonna look for an effect called VR Blur. You're gonna find it under Immersive Video, and then lastly, like I said, onto that mat. But I'm an idiot, and that's not the last thing you're gonna be looking up. <laughs> so you're gonna go ahead and look for an effect called Syncon Converter. Wait, did I spell it wrong? Sinon Conver Converter, Sinon Converter, I'm not really sure how to say it, but you're gonna find it under Utility. Now go ahead and make sure to grab the top Sinon Converter and drag it onto that adjustment layer. Now we're actually completely done with that adjustment layer, but we're gonna have to mess with this white mat a little bit. So select the white mat on your timeline and then go to the effects controls in the top left. Now in the effects controls, go ahead and go down to VR Blur. This is gonna be the easiest one. Just change this VR Blur value to three. We're gonna minimize that. Then we're gonna go to Wave Warp. Now under Wave Warp, you're gonna change the wave type to Sawtooth, the wave height to 13,000, the wave width to 140, the direction to 180 degrees, and then the wave speed to zero. Now we're completely done with Wave Warp. Next up, we're gonna to go to Roughen Edges. Now under Roughen Edges, you're gonna to wanna to change your edge type to Rusty, your border to 500, your edge sharpness to 10, and your complexity to 10. Now here's the part that's gonna be a little annoying, but it's not that bad. Under Roughen Edges, you're gonna to wanna to go to Scale and hit the stopwatch next to scale. You're going to want to change your first scale value to 1000. Next, you're going to use the arrow keys on your keyboard and move to the right two frames. So one, two, then you're going to change your scale value to 400. You're going to do the same thing with these next two keyframes. So we're going to go to the right one, two, change scale value to 800. Go to the right one, two, and then you change your scale value to 300. Now, when you're not zoomed in, it looks like we have done absolutely nothing. So what you're going to need to do is zoom in a bit here and you can see we've got our four keyframes, but this is not going to be for the whole effect. So we need to, you know, make it longer. And how are we going to do that? We're going to do the same thing we did on the last effect. We're just going to select these keyframes, hold your alt key on your keyboard, and then stretch it out. Like I said, try to have roughly the same spacing, but it does not have to be exact. After this, just duplicate these keyframes for as long as your effect needs to be going on. And once 
you're done, you look like you have a, a completely gray line from how many keyframes you have. <laughs> but that is definitely the most annoying part of this whole video. Trust me, we're, we're on the downslope from here. Now we're completely done with rough and edges so we can minimize that. And then lastly, we're gonna be going up to the position here under motion. Now this part that we're adding here is going to be the motion of these lines going up and down. So I've got some pretty random values here, but I'm gonna show you the values that I have. Now, like I said, the only thing this is adding is the motion of those lines going up and down. So the only value I messed with for this position was the Y value. Now I spaced them out like this and I gave them these values here. And I felt like this is just added a good randomness to the lines going up and down. But like I said, you guys do it how you want to do it. But keep in mind, you're going to need this move to be going out throughout the entire effect. Just select all these keyframes, hold your alt key, left click, and then make duplicates. And then you can space them out or move them however you want. Now, once you're done, you have a nice TV static going up and down. Now, one more thing you can add to this TV static to make it a, just a little bit better and add your own individuality to it. Go ahead and under that white mat, add a noise to it. And then I set my noise to around 50%. And to me, they just added that little extra touch to make it just a bit better. And there you go, we've made our depth effect, we've made our zoom and subtle motion effect, and lastly we made our TV static, all of which I think are some pretty nice effects. And also if you would like the project file I used for this video, I have it down in the description below so you can look at my keyframes and exactly how I did it. But once again, I encourage you guys to have your own individuality, change some of these effects a little bit, add your own touch and make it your own. But hopefully you guys found this video helpful, and if so, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it. Also, let me know down in the comments below what was your favorite effect I covered in this video, and what are some effects you want me to cover in a future video. And until next time, peace. Now the text we're going to be covering today is going to be the sh 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 sh